Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 13th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Google's project Zero is looking at security software again, and it released details about six different privilege escalation flaws in Samsung's Knox protection for Android. Knox includes a component known as real-time kernel protection, also RKP, and uh, it is supposed to protect the kernel of Android. Now, Google Project Zero found a number of flaws in this component that can be used to bypass real-time kernel protection. Google's write-up is not just interesting because, well, it talks about these vulnerabilities, but it really goes into quite a bit in depth how sort of these hypervisor based kernel protection systems work and how the bypass methods that Google found actually worked in this particular case and could help bypass protections that are supposed to prevent the kernel from getting compromised. Of course, uh, these vulnerabilities only matter if there are actual vulnerabilities in Android that can be used to reach root. But of course, uh, there are typically plenty of them. So it's good that Samsung released a patch for the problem a few weeks ago. If you are relying on Samsung Knox uh, to protect your Android phones, it's time to update. If you're running MongoDB and if you are listening to this podcast regular, you're probably aware of all the exploits that are being used in the wild to attack vulnerable MongoDB configurations. A new tool was just released to GitHub by Aran Sanchez de Pedro that assists MongoDB administrators in scanning instances of MongoDB for configuration issues or for known vulnerabilities. There are about 20 different items that are being tested by the tools. Haven't run it uh, myself yet, but the instructions look pretty straightforward. Uh, If you have any feedback, uh, let me know if this tool worked for you, if it found anything that you found interesting. But keep in mind, like all vulnerability scanners, run it against the test instance first before you expose a critical production instance to it. And if you aren't worried about MongoDB, you may be worried about JavaScript. So many exploits against clients these days arrive as JavaScript. And Xavier went over some JavaScript that was obfuscated this weekend and published a nice diary about it. He found this JavaScript on Pastebin and it makes a real good exercise to look at what the different obfuscation techniques are that this particular sample used and how to defeat them to figure out what this piece of JavaScript was trying to accomplish. And WordFence, a company that provides services to protect WordPress from common vulnerabilities, released a report showing how the recent REST API vulnerability in WordPress has been exploited and exploited very widely. Most of the exploits just result in a defacement. I always call this your best possible exploit because you immediately know that you do have a problem According to WordFence, uh, Google now returns 1.9 million results. If you are looking for common terms that show up in these defacements, doesn't of course necessarily mean that there are 1.9 million defaced sites. Uh, Typically, Google returns the number of pages and of course, a virtual compromised site may have multiple pages with the defacement string in it. These attacks are in no way targeted. Everybody's getting hit by this. Actually, I just looked at my honeypot earlier and WordPress attacks are all over the place. They're all over my logs. Not just this recent REST attack, but WordPress attacks in general are very, very common. Well, uh, WordPress is written in PHP, and if you are developing a lot in PHP, like uh, I do, then you may want to take a look at a nice blog post by the Paragon Initiative that outlines some good rules on how to deal with cryptography securely in PHP. As the blog post explains in the beginning, implementing cryptography in PHP is difficult, probably shouldn't be done if you can avoid it, but there are a couple of things 
things that you sort of just have to do sometimes, like for example, getting good random numbers. And that's something actually that got improved in PHP 7. Also comparing hashes uh, without allowing for a side channel. This requires equal time operations. So the operation shouldn't really take more or less time depending on how close the hashes are. Something like this is actually quite ambitious uh, to accomplish uh, in PHP, but uh, they do give you in this block uh, some uh, nice hints and also some of the commands that you can use for that. They even go as far as showing an algorithm to do equal time multiplications uh, in PHP. Cryptography, of course, is always a big issue for web applications. It's a big part of our defending web application class. And by the way, if you're interested in that, in April, Jason is going uh, to teach it in Orlando. And well, uh, this is it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.